What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Casey and uh, I'm just unpacking the Jeep from the last adventure and I thought we'd take a bit of time today to talk about recovery gear. So let's go through my recovery bag and I will show you all of the gear that I take with me on trips and then some of the optional gear that I take or don't take depending on what scenarios I think I might encounter. And I'll talk to you a little bit about my winch and my winch setup. And I was trying to figure out a way to demonstrate some of my gear as we go through it. So we're gonna try a little experiment using a one tenth scale version of the Jeep. Rather than just showing you the gear that I bring, I really wanna give you examples of where I use it. So let's start the video off with the most essential item, a winch. I recommend anybody who wants to go out off-roading think about putting a winch on their Jeep. So what I have on my Jeep here is a worn Xeon 12S winch. I have it recessed into the factory bumper. So on my winches, I always run synthetic winch line on them. This is my recommendation. So there are pros and cons to synthetic winch line. Uh, the big ones are that you need to inspect it regularly. You should clean it regularly and inspect it for flat squish spots and fraying, and they do need to be replaced. The two main benefits for me with a synthetic winch line are, well, you can handle it with your bare hands and not worry about getting burrs like a steel line. Uh, it's also a much lighter and it's safer. If this breaks, it's gonna dissipate the kinetic en energy quite quickly and not go flying like a steel line would if it breaks. But you do have to be more careful with synthetic winch line. Now, before we move on to the gear itself, uh, I'm just gonna address this because I know there's gonna be comments about winch hooks. Some of you may have seen the metalless or winch hook or hookless design. Uh, I can't remember the company that, that makes it. I'm sure they're good. I've never used one. I like to have a versatile metal hook on here. This is an aluminum hook from Factor 55. It has a closed loop system as well as a hooks system on here that we can also lock. I like this because it's versatile, it's reliable, I've never had any problems with it, and it looks cool. Part of jeeping is looking cool, right? I'm sure those other hookless designs work just fine. Lots of people seem to say a lot of positive things. You pick the one you want. I think they're all gonna be good for doing recoveries. And the last thing I'll say about winches are, winches are for winching. I know that's gonna sound kind of obvious to you, but winches are not made for towing. They're not made for hooking up to another vehicle and then driving your vehicle in reverse to pull it out. Winches are made to winch. Winches are made to be used while your vehicle is stationary and the winch is gonna spool in and pull in whatever it is connected to. Now I'm gonna show you a few things in my recovery bag that will make this winch more useful and more effective, but also so that I don't have to use my winch to tow things. It's a winch, it's for winching. Now, full disclaimer before we get going with this video, guys, I am not a recovery expert. I am not certified in recoveries. I've just been off-roading for many, many years. Got myself stuck in some very curious places, recovered a lot of people, and just have a lot of, a lot of real world experience with recoveries and using recovery gear. And I want to share that knowledge with you guys in this video. So do make sure you're reading all the manuals, the instructions, everything that comes with any recovery equipment you have. You know its limits, its weight ratings, and go watch some more in-depth videos on using each piece of your recovery gear in your bag and go out and practice. You know, don't be afraid to get stuck. Get some of that real world experience, understand how it works for yourself. But just wanted to make that clear before we get going. I wanted to make this video to share with you guys my experience, what I bring, and when I use it. I'm gonna talk about something that I think is important before we get into going through all this gear, and that is where you stow your recovery gear. I think it's super important to keep your recovery gear stowed somewhere that's easily accessible. Don't have it in your tailgate buried behind 15 things that you have to remove and unlatch and unstrap to get to your recovery gear, because odds are if you need your recovery gear, you're in a bit of a weird situation, your Jeep may be off camber, you may have something right up behind you, keep it in an easy to access location. And for me, that's usually gonna be right here, right behind my driver's seat. So I can easily hop out of my Jeep, I don't have to go around to maybe a cliff edge that's on the other side, yes, that has happened. And I can grab anything out of my recovery bag that I need. Now I do keep a couple essential items 
within reach of my driver's seat. But the other thing with having this right behind your seat is if you can't get to this door, you can't get out, maybe you're in three feet of water because you're having fun, you can turn around and reach over your driver's seat and grab out the items you might need to throw them to somebody else they may be helping you. Now, one of the most common used things in my recovery bag are these things. These are called soft shackles. I like these because, well, they don't bind up like a hard shackle does. I really prefer to use a soft shackle wherever I can. I do bring a traditional D-ring shackle. I'll show you what's in the bag in a second, but I just wanted to stop here at the front seat to talk about shackles really quick. I bring a few of these with me. Now this one is fresh and brand new, so it's super clean and not worn out at all, but I always like to keep a shackle right in my driver's seat area. I'll keep it right there underneath my front driver's seat, or I'll keep it here in this little side bag thing that sags over time if you keep stuff in it, or you'll see in the other truck, I keep one hanging off the passenger grab bar. I wanna be able to grab one of these right away. I use these all the time. You pretty much need them for any recovery scenario and somebody always seems to need a shackle. So keep one right there, right under your driver's seat. Grab it, boom, throw it out the window. Hey, all right, go recover your vehicle. Use my shackle, thank you. You're welcome. You say you're, you say you're welcome, not thank you. Do understand a couple things about soft shackles. One, uh, make sure you know, hey, this is cool. Understand the load rating. All good soft shackles or hard shackles or any recovery gear will have some sort of working load limit. This is also made for fa from Factor 55. And I will put links to all of the gear that I'm using in this video in the description below if you wanna check it out. You know, fill out some holes in your recovery gear setup. I'll make it nice and easy for you guys. It'll be down in the description. A couple other things. You wanna know how a soft shackle works. Uh, they have a loop that is made by the rope going through the shackle itself. So there's no parts that can come off of this. You can't lose the pin, it, whatever. It's always ready to go. You basically just put this around whatever thing you're needing to tie together, slip the giant ball through the hoop. And when the soft shackle has tension put on it, that circle, the eyelet is gonna hold this big fat ball and it's not going to come apart. Now I always have my soft shackles set up so this ball is on top, not on the bottom. So when it's loose, it can't fall off by accident. That can happen with some other shackles. These ones seem to be pretty good and don't do that. But some soft shackles, these can stay kind of loose. And if you have the ball on the bottom, this can come apart on you and then you gotta run out and redo all your rigging. So there you go, a couple things about soft shackles. Now I always keep two of these. I keep one within reach and I keep one here in my recovery bag. So that's gonna move us on to the next part of the video. And then we'll get on to some cool demos with remote car, remote control cars, hopefully. I hope it works out for you guys. We're gonna film it, I'm gonna put it up anyways, maybe it'll suck, but at least I'll narrate the things you need to know. The next thing to talk about is having a recovery bag itself. I recommend this because it lets you keep all of your recovery gear in one location, especially if you're moving it in and out of your Jeep, maybe you don't have a permanent off-road vehicle that you leave all of your gear on, gear on, gear in. And when you get home, you wanna unpack, you just take this with you. And when you load up your Jeep, you know you have everything in it. So a good, a good gear bag is really handy. It also keeps everything confined so that it's not rolling around in your Jeep and then you're looking everywhere, trying to find it during high stress recovery points during your trip, you know where it is. And as well, if you need to grab more than one item, you can just grab the bag and go and help somebody out that may be several vehicles away down the trail and they don't know what gear they need and it saves you running back and forth between your rig and the recovery scenario. So in my gear bag, as I mentioned, I have another soft shackle. I'm gonna show you what, why I need soft shackles and where we're gonna use them here as we start to unpack some more of this gear. I'm gonna talk about stuff in order of how much use it gets, how common I use these items. So we started with the winch, use that a lot. Soft shackles, use those all the time. Next up, this is a tree saver. It's about eight feet in length, and it is very common to be using this. This isn't a tow strap, this isn't for towing vehicles, although I guess you could, but what this is for is if you need to attach either your winch hook or some rigging, to a tree. So you don't wanna wrap your winch line around a tree to do a recovery. You wanna wrap this around a tree. First of all, it's much wider. It has an abrasive jacket on it. So it's gonna protect the tree saver itself. And so if you wrap your winch line around the tree, 
uh, it's gonna damage that winch line. It's not, it's not meant to be uh, snagged on trees and moving around. It's gonna damage your winch line. But as well, it's gonna help protect the tree. A thin little winch line is gonna cut in and damage the bark. And, and we wanna try and practice treading lightly as much as we can, which means not damaging trees. Because if everybody used the same trees, which is very common in certain scenarios, to do recoveries with, eventually that tree is gonna like get damaged, maybe chopped down because that winch line is going around it all the time. You'll see, you'll see trees out there occasionally with, you can tell that people have wrapped a tight rope on it. So the other thing is, it's gonna make it a lot easier to use a tree for a recovery with a tree saver. Rather than trying to get your winch line around, you just come up to the tree and whip this around. And now you've got the ability to attach a soft shackle. Remember we talked about soft shackles. We just take our soft shackle, we're gonna run it through the eyelets of our tree saver, and now we can attach whatever we need to this tree. So that's gonna lead us to the next item, the donut. No, it's not actually not a actually donut. This is a uh, modernized version of a snatch block. This is actually called a rope retention pulley. This is also made by Factor 55. This is aluminum and super lightweight. All right, well, I was gonna show you a regular snatch block, like the more traditional one from this. I can't seem to find where I put the one that I have, um, but I'll put a picture of one up on the screen right here. Now, I've, I've been using a snatch block in my recovery bag for quite some time. Um, and then I started using the rapid retention rope pulley, RRP, rope retention pulley. Two reasons why I prefer this style. One, this is much, much lighter than a snatch block. This is super light. This is made out of aluminum. It's, it's way lighter and it just cuts down on some of the weight in the recovery bag. And I think this is simpler and easier to use. So let, so let me show you how I would use it. And then I'll show you a couple scenarios of uh, when I would use this using the remote control car because we can't do a recovery here in my driveway with my Jeep. All right, so we've got our shackle and tree saver attached to our tree, we need to do a recovery. Now there's generally two things that I would attach to the tree. One, that hook that you just saw, I would come on, clip it onto the soft shackle and use this tree to pull my Jeep out of something. Now there's a couple times where that may not be the ideal scenario. One, the tree that you wanna to use to recover is too close to your Jeep. So what do you mean the tree is too close to your Jeep? Well, let me explain. Your winch has different weight ratings depending on how many wraps around the drum have been spooled out. The more winch line that you take off of your winch, the more powerful through the mechanics of pulleys, right? Because your winch drum is getting smaller with less wraps, the more powerful your winch becomes. Now Warren lists the different weight ratings of their their winches i'll put it up in the corner here depending on how many wraps are on the drum so if you're trying to recover your massive jeep and the tree is six feet in front of you you're not going to be able to pull a lot of winch line off of your winch and therefore your winch isn't going to be as strong but what you can do is you can take a snatch block attach it to the tree you could run your winch line through that snatch block and off to another tree that isn't in the right angle and extend your winch line way out and make your winch more powerful. The other option would be you could run your winch line out to the tree through your snatch block and back to one of your Jeep's recovery points. That's gonna make your winch line longer, so it's gonna have a smaller spool on the drum, but because of science and physics and using a pulley, that's gonna also make your winch twice as powerful. And so the rope retention pulley works very much like a regular snatch block would. Uh, you need to run your soft shackle through this because it needs the soft, soft shackle to rotate on. And then what you're gonna do is run your winch line through this, turning it into a pulley. We've got this attached to a tree, we've got our pulley, and we can do whatever we want with our winch line. We could pivot off of this pulley to another recovery point off to the side, or we could loop it back to our Jeep, take another soft shackle, and like this, if I was the, now if I was the tree, I'd be anchored to the tree, my winch line comes out, goes through the pulley, and then back to my Jeep, doubling the power of my winch. So there you go, like this, gives you another perspective. Now what's nice is Factor 55 uses these little rubber or silicone 
uh, teeth on here to help your winch line from uh, falling out when this goes slack like that before you have everything kind of set up and ready to go. So nice little feature with the Factor 55 donut. Move this out of the way. There you go. Okay, here is the other scenario that I have mocked up for you guys where you might want to use a snatch block. Let's say your friend with their uh, Ultra 4 buggy is stuck at the bottom of an obstacle and uh, you're already up here at the top of the obstacle and you want to winch them up. Now there's no good spot right here at the top to park your Jeep to then run a winch line down to your friend to get them up. So you can use a snatch block. And what you would do is, instead of a roll of tape, use, <laughs> use the donut or a snatch block connected to the tree and run your winch line through that pulley like I just showed you and attach it to the vehicle at the bottom of the obstacle. And then you can leave your vehicle parked up top here and bring your winch in and pull the other vehicle up the obstacle. What I'm trying to explain here is that you can position your vehicle in a optimal spot, or maybe you just can't position your vehicle in the right place to do a recovery, but there's a good tree or some other anchor point that you can use to pull the other vehicle up the obstacle. You can be off to the side, way in some other direction, run your winch line out through your snatch block or your rapid recovery donut. I'm never gonna remember what Factor 55 calls it. And then run your winch line down to the vehicle and pull them up the obstacle. It's also gonna let you get much more winch line out, therefore making your winch more powerful. It also means that you can do a recovery at a more straight on angle to your winch rather than having your winch line coming out the side here at some crazy angle and rubbing on the side of your fair lead. Or maybe it's like, you don't, want, you don't wanna do this. You don't wanna recover completely parallel to your bumper. So it lets you put the winch where it's strongest, where it's built to perform and bring the line straight in while then recovering off a tree and going sideways to wherever you need the location of your recovery. Now, before we get too far in this video, I do wanna also note that I do keep at least one traditional D-ring shackle. These are a lot heavier than a soft shackle. The thing to note with a uh, D-ring shackle is this pin can bind, especially if you tighten this all the way up and then start to put a load on this D-ring, this is gonna be very hard to undo. So I always tighten these up and then back it off a quarter of a turn before doing my recovery. And that's gonna let you undo this pin a lot easier when you're done. Now, why do I bring one of these? That is because not all bumpers can use a soft shackle, like the worn bumper I have on my JL here. It has a D-ring shackle mount point on it that I can't put a soft shackle through. I mean, I could probably jam it through there, but it's got some pretty sharp edges on it. So I'm gonna wanna put this D-ring shackle on before I do recovery and then I can attach stuff to this bumper. I don't like to leave my shackles on here because they do that. They rattle, they make noise. Uh, if you don't zip tie these pins on so they can't turn, eventually this thing will do this too much and the pin will come out and then you'll go to look for your D-ring shackle on the back when you need it and it's gone, it's fallen off your Jeep. So I keep one of these in the bag just in case I need it, but I usually need it if I need somebody to, to attach to the back of my Jeep because of the way the, the bumper works on this one. But if we come over here to the Gladiator which has the factory hooks on the back of it, we can use a soft shackle because we can just loop it on and that's kind of what they're made for. I really need to uh, wash my Jeeps a little bit before I make these videos. I keep bumping into it and covered covered in dirt, which I guess takes us to a good segue. Uh, if you guys want to help support making these videos, I have some awesome merch on my website, dirtyanddangerous.com. You can pick up safety second hoodies, dirty and dangerous hats. There's key tags, stickers, cool merch uh, that you can grab and wear and show your support for the channel. I appreciate it. If you want to grab something, pick it up, show your support, wear it around, tag me on Instagram. If you're wearing it, take a picture. I love to see that kind of stuff. Dirtyanddangerous.com, thank you. All right, now to the fun part of the video, recovery ropes and straps. We've got two options here. We have oh, this big guy here. This is a kinetic recovery rope, basically a giant bungee cord. And in the bottom of my recovery bag, because I use this probably the least, this is a toe strap. 
So what I wanted to demonstrate to you guys is the actual working difference between a toe strap and a kinetic recovery rope. But before we do, I know I'm gonna get some questions. Casey, what about recovery boards? What is a recovery board? <laughs> this, this thing. Uh, I have a couple of these. These come in different flavors from different companies. This one, super cheap. I don't even know the brand of it. You can get it on Amazon. And then there are the big name guys, which you know who I'm talking about if you know what I'm talking about, but they're like four times the cost of these. Honestly, I recommend getting just a cheap set of recovery boards unless you find yourself using them all the time. Now, what would you use these for? Well, if you're a true overlander, you're gonna bring these with you to park underneath your Jeep and level it off when you set up your rooftop tent, but that's not actually what they're for. These are to give you some extra traction in scenarios where you don't have traction. Now, remember earlier in the video when I said there's some gear that I bring sometimes and some gear that I don't bring depending on the situation, recovery boards go into that pile. And no, I don't bring them all the time to level out my Jeep. You can usually find a stump or a rock or something like that to set up camp and get your Jeep flat and square. No, I bring these usually if I'm going one of two places. On the sand, so if we're heading down to the sand dunes, there's some awesome sand dunes down in Oregon. Check it out, I'll put a link to a couple of my adventures down there. These are great if you get bogged down, your tire gets stuck, you need to use it on an angle to get your tire back up and out of a, a rut or a hole that you dug by spinning your tires. Also, it's not too common to find big trees in the middle of a desert or sand dunes to do recoveries with. Traction boards can be super helpful. The other time I'm gonna bring traction boards with me is when it's snowing or I'm going on a snowy adventure. These are excellent if you start to lose uh, traction on the snow and maybe you get bogged down and you need to get back up on the snow or snow can be quite, quite slippery when it gets compacted. You can just shove one of these under your tires and roll forward. The other thing too is often when there's snow, it's gonna be deep and it's really hard to get out and run a winch line off to a tree uh, that can be quite far away in deep snow. And it's a lot faster, a lot easier just to grab one of these, put one under each tire uh, and get going. It's a lot faster, a lot easier, and uh, gets you back on the trail quicker. So the two times I bring these, sand or snow. Otherwise I generally leave them at home because they're pretty bulky to carry around in a Wrangler. Maybe one day I'll get some sort of mounting system for them and uh, attach them to the spare tire or the side or something and just keep them with me all the time. But I generally uh, only bring these for certain trips. Back to toe straps versus kinetic recovery ropes. What is the difference you say? Well, a kinetic recovery rope is very much like a bungee cord or an elastic. And I'm gonna show you here in a second the difference between the two if you're trying to pull a vehicle. Both of these are used to pull a vehicle. So a kinetic recovery rope you're gonna usually use if your vehicle or another vehicle is stuck. Maybe they're stuck in some deep snow, in some mud or some sand, and maybe you don't have very good traction. Well, you can use this to get going, get some momentum, and because this is elastic, it's going to slowly expand and then start to pull the other vehicle out. I'll show you here in a second. Generally, I'll use these when I don't need such a fine level of control with the recovery. Maybe I can't get good traction to pull somebody out with a, with a toe strap so I can get a little speed going and then this will kick in and pull them out. But if I need really fine control over the recovery, I won't use this. These are a little less controllable, a little less predictable. A little less, yeah, a little less predictable. A toe strap is a static strap. This has no flex in it whatsoever. And these are great for towing. These are great for towing vehicles. So if you need to tow somebody out of something and they're stuck in an obstacle and you can get traction and you can hook them up to your vehicle with a tow strap, you can run this out. This is quite a long one. How long is this? This is long, doesn't say how long it is. You can run this out to your vehicle and then the stuck vehicle, bring this to, to, to be tight. You don't wanna give your vehicle gas when this has a bunch of slack in it. That's not what this is for. That's how you're gonna break things and uh, possibly cause injuries. And then you can move forward and tow the vehicle up or through over whatever it is you need to. Uh, it's really good if you're in front and somebody's behind you and maybe they don't have a winch because they didn't watch this video and they went out off-roading and you need to pull them through something. You can run this back off the back of your vehicle and pull them, pull them through. So let me show you 
the difference. We've got our two vehicles, the one that needs to be towed or recovered and our recovering vehicle. And what I have are simulated tow straps, see? No elasticity and a simulated kinetic recovery rope. Lots of elasticity. The big advantage with the kinetic recovery strap, or in this case, a bungee cord, is that if you don't have good traction on the towing vehicle, you can have some slack in the rope, start to get some momentum. That momentum is gonna store and build up in the kinetic recovery rope and then eventually release and pull the vehicle behind it. So when I'm doing this kind of recovery, I'll start with a short pull. I don't wanna go full out right out of the gate. So, you know, we'll back up just a little bit and then go, and you can see it just moves the vehicle a little bit. Now, if we back up a little bit more and go, you can see it starts to move the vehicle a lot. And if we back right up and then just pin it, see how much force gets transferred to the vehicle that you're towing? Now, to contrast this, we'll hook up our static strap, our tow strap, which doesn't have any elasticity to it. And so when you're using a tow strap or a static strap, you wanna get all the slack out of the line before you start to tow the vehicle because it doesn't have the ability to store up any kinetic en energy in the rope and then you can tow the vehicle with it. So what happens if you try to take a running start with a tow strap? Well, because it isn't a kinetic recovery rope and can store energy into it, you're gonna get going really fast and all of a sudden all of that energy that you have, that momentum is gonna go straight to the vehicle that you're recovering you could break things because you can now exceed a lot of the load limits of your shackles, the mount points, maybe the strap itself, and break things or things can go flying. Now by comparison, let's take a look at our kinetic recovery rope, AKA bungee cord. You can see just how much more smoothly the momentum from the towing vehicle is transferred into the stuck vehicle. This means that if you have low traction, you can get a running start and you don't risk breaking your vehicles. So hopefully my little demonstration with a uh, bungee cord and a rope gives you a good idea of just the difference of how a tow strap and a kinetic recovery rope behave out on the trail. And I would recommend starting out slow, do a little pull, then back up a little further, give it a little more throttle, do another pull and try to aim for the third attempt, getting the right amount of momentum with your kinetic recovery rope to pull the vehicle out. But if you're gonna be towing a vehicle down a trail, maybe it's broken, or you need a very precise amount of movement to get a vehicle unstuck, you can see the tow strap is going to be better for that because you're gonna know ex exactly what's gonna happen. There's no stretch, there's no energy being stored in this and then being released into the vehicle. Hopefully that helps you guys out with picking which tools you wanna to bring with you in your recovery bag. I'll put links to all of the things in this video down in the description below, well, except the no, I'll put the RC cars in there too. Sure, why not? Maybe you want some RC cars because they're fun too, right? You like off-roading? Well, you can go off-roading in your front yard with RC cars whenever you want and then go off-roading on the weekends. There are affiliate links. If you buy something, there's no extra cost to you, but a little bit of commission goes back to me, helps support the channels. Use some of those links. I appreciate it a ton. Helps me make more of these videos for you guys. Hopefully I can help some of you guys get out on the trail, feel a little more confident, understand what gear you are bringing and understand maybe what gear you might wanna pick up. We're getting so close to 100,000 subscribers. It has been a goal of mine for almost six years since I started the channel to get to that 100,000 subscriber mark. I would really appreciate it if you take a quick second, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna see some behind the scenes videos, extra uploads, things just not making it on the main channel, I've added a member section to the channel. There's a little join button next to the subscribe button. You can click on that and join the community here on my channel. My name's Casey. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.